We're the end producers. This is Enema. This is Stonehammer, and it's fucking whiskey time. the good kind of whiskey, you know? You gotta pull the cork out. I bet you don't know a whole lot about pulling out. I had sex with my six kids. Somebody's gonna bitch about how this isn't enough alcohol. Hey, I have to drive. Garen fucking teed. I'll, one out of 20 said. This is Enema. It's Tool's best fucking album. Don't argue with me. It's you're incorrect. Take it. Take drink your whiskey. Okay. That's my thesis statement. Your thesis statement is that's best Tool's. Best that's album. Tool's best album. It's Tool's they, best first half of an album. Oh, you motherfucker! What? Here's what I want to start with. You know what these people, all these music reviewers. When they review music, yeah, when they review music, when they critique music, you know what they don't talk about? What's that? They don't talk about the package. So look, you see this? You see this holographic cover? Yeah. I bust this fucker open. You see this CD? Yeah. You see this shit? You see all these words and shit? Yeah, I I can see the words and shit. You see all these words and shit? The real reason I had to get this out was so I remembered which order the tracks came in. Yeah. It's hard to remember because so, all the good ones are in the front. Since we've never talked about Tool before, I think, ever on the channel, but especially not on this new uh, new program. We haven't really talked about music. Very much at all. That's fine. That's where it, This is a fine place to start. So, it, tell me about Tool, Eric. Give uh, me like a general... Where? When did you first listen to Tool? Uh... I listen to Tool when everybody listens to Tool for the first time in middle school. <laughs> oh, god damn. I think that it, was probably the first time I heard him. You got me into Tool. I know, but I don't remember the... It was it was in that that time frame. Fifth, sixth grade. Yeah. You were like, hey, Eric, listen to this song. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm like, whoa, bro. Now I feel like I'm deep in shit. You feel ascended when you listen to Tool yeah. and you're 12. Yeah. I mean, I feel ascended when I listen to Tool now. Just less ascended. I will say, I wouldn't call them one of my favorite, favorite bands anymore. But I will say that I think this is about as interesting as, like, a successful metal band or rock band can be. Like, a, you know, you know, when I say successful, I mean, like, their shit gets played on the radio. Everybody knows who they yeah. are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... I remember taking my dad's Tool CDs and putting them on my MP3 player because that's what we did, right? Yeah. And their shit still isn't on streaming, so... Yeah, they're too good for streaming. Fucking bullshit, if you ask me. I pay uh, for fucking Spotify. I at least want to be able to listen to Tool. This is the first album that they did. It's their third release. But their second album, and this is the first album I feel like they introduced some of that proggy type shit that they just keep, you know. Yeah. They've sort of evolved to be more proggy over time. Yeah. Look how not, well we can play our instrument. Exactly. The band. Not exactly. But I think this is the best balance of the two. Yeah. All right. We got to talk about the title. So the title. A-E. One letter. Like, what is the, that's the Greek letter what? Um. I don't... Is it a Greek letter? I didn't think it was a Greek letter. I thought it was Old English. Let me find out. I got a computer in front of me. We'll find out. Right. 
but the A E the the title of Enema is supposed to be a combination of Enema and Anima because look at me, I'm so smart. Anima is a Jungian psychology term, which means like the soul or spirit in Enema is, you know, you pump liquid up your ass and shit yourself. You got that over there? It's a, it's a, yeah, so it's a letter in a couple alphabets, including Danish, Norwegian, Icelandic, but it started as a representation of a Latin diphthong. Diphthong? You know, when you, uh, it's a kind of vocalization. I'm not going to get into linguistics, who gives a fuck? But anyway... So the title has an I, as you were saying. There's a title track that has an E, but we'll get into Wait. it. Oh, right. Okay. We'll get into that. We're gonna we're gonna go through song by song, and we're just gonna talk about how uh, Eric Eric's of, Eric's opinions are probably wrong, and mine are probably right. No, the first half of this album is good. Stink last... fist. Uh, we gotta talk about Tool's trend of. Their lyricism having double entendre. They usually talk about some like normal ass. I mean, you know, I don't want to say normal ass, but just like understandable, like song kind of song themes. Right. You know. Fisting. Well, when you get when you get into the lyrics of this stink fist, it really kind of talks about like connecting with other people on a personal level, but it is also about. Fisting. Fisting, on, especially on a surface level, and plus the song, of course, is named Stink Fist. Yes. It is a really good song, though. It's, like, heavy. It's night, like... It's very simple. It's obvi- yeah. it's obviously, like, the single. Oh, that's it's fine. one of them, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I th- it was... It was probably the lead single. I think it was uh, Stink Fist, Enema, H, and 46 and 2 were the four lead-up singles on this album, if I remember right, that I read about an hour ago. So, at some point, we got to talk about what each member is doing for the sound of the band. Um, Do you want to get into it now? Because obviously, sure. Because I don't, re- I can't never well, let- really remember who everyone is. Well, obviously, everyone uh, knows Maynard. Yeah, he's singer. an asshole. He's not that bad, but he is a bit of an asshole for sure. Yeah, he's like Shia LaBeouf a couple years ago, where he like. <laughs> Where I'm not famous anymore, bags and shit like that. <laughs> Am I wrong? I mean, no. You have a- Adam playing the guitar. Lots of scre- right. lots of screeching. Yeah. The interesting thing: this is the first album with the bassist Justin Chancellor. On a technical level, I think is a lot better than their first bassist. But the interesting thing about the band is a lot of for a, for a mainstream successful rock band, and this is what I'm talking about. They incorporate some some experimental kind of. Right. Ideas sometimes, so a lot of the time, the the lead part of the song, normally you'd expect it to be, you know, the fucking guitar in a traditional metal or rock setting, but a lot of the time it is Justin playing the lead, like uh, 46 and 2, which we'll yeah, get oh, to. Yeah. yeah. Where the bass is definitely carrying the the weight of the, uh, the melody of the song. And then there's Danny, who I, I play the drums. I don't know if I've brought that up before, and I'm going to assume that nobody watches any of our old videos that are dog shit, so. This one is, too. He is the one that uh, I personally am like. He's obviously my favorite because he's been, yeah, well, he's been an inspiration on a lot of my playing just because he's very unique. Tyler hangs out at Guitar Center on Saturdays. <laughs> Every Saturday. Yeah. Nine hours. Yep. Free. Of course. So stink fist, good opener. It's a bop. Oh yeah, fantastic. Nice. It's 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 one of the best examples of what I was saying about them combining just their normal. Because their first album had a lot of weird sort of time signature shit too, but I think stink fist as an opener does a kind of sets an example for the rest of the album as like it's, right. It's a straightforward song for the most part, but it does have some of the little weird touches that you would expect from Tool. Especially if you started with their later shit. Oh, yeah. Eulogy. One of the best fucking songs uh, on here. One of my favorite Tool songs in general. The shit's a bop. Of course. Talks about Jesus. Or maybe Lots of not. weird fucking sounds all over it. Oh, yeah. Like duck call sounds. Yeah. Um, tapping guitar bridge weird, I think. Yeah, it's 
Danny's it's really like, using the his weird electronics in this one. Yeah. Does he use a wood block in this song or no? Or is no, that like it's, them, there, is there's it, those pads. Right. They have like wood block sounds, but I don't think Right. So it's originally it's a really heavy It builds. Yeah, it builds and it has one of the best drum solos in any tool song ever that you know, I can't even compare it to anything else that I've heard in any other like metal song. Because it's it's too weird. It's fucking out. It's exactly, and and that's. I'm I'm probably gonna keep calling back to this now that I've made it a, a central tenet of my opinion on the album. But it just goes to like it's it sounds simple, right. but it's really nothing you'd hear on their first album. No, it's definitely no, more not. towards that. They're yeah. leaning towards the technical side. They're bridging the technical playing, but trying to make it a little bit accessible for. The right. average person to be able to to uh, yeah. appreciate it too. So yeah, can we talk about how this album is now twenty three years old and still like really holds up? It's as old as us. Yeah, it came out the year. It came it's out a little, before we well, were Yeah, born. a little bit older than us. Yeah, and it does hold up. Oh yeah, it definitely holds up. That's one thing you can say about about their uh, their music, regardless of even if you like it or don't like it. I feel that all of their albums have a like a, a nice distinct atmosphere. Yeah. That uh. And as a band, they have a, a, a unique atmosphere, but every album kind of feels a little bit different. Right. And, and, it's, know, and it's a unique experience, yeah, I think. Yeah, of course. And any time, you know, like, there's a Tool album for every mood you have. This album, I'm pissed off, I'm going to listen to Enola today. I'm sad, I'm going to listen to 10,000 Days. You know what I'm saying? And everyone's, everyone has, you know, that album that they listen to from Tool when they got a... You know, I want to feel like I'm smarter listening to Let Her Alice. <laughs> and unique for a band, like I said, of their success, Eulogy is a is a very not traditional song because it's not really a verse chorus structure and it's pretty long. Right. For their, you know, it's one of their, it is one of their longer songs. Not very longest, but it's up there. Yeah, it's definitely up there. So, it's good shit. The, the lyrics pretty openly talk about like mar- martyrdom and, and, yeah. and, religion and right and uh the cult-like following that people can build around them so i think they've said it's about l ron hubbard and some people think it's about jesus that's one thing that you'll never get like a definitive answer on is what a song is about but it's always more interesting to me at least when yeah when you can interpret when you and i can read the exact same lyrics and be like it's about it's obviously about this and you think well uh, it's obviously about this so that's the right one though kill yourself all right h Track three, H. Um, one of the weakest songs, in my opinion, on this album. I agree. I, it does have a nice vibe. Yeah. The lyrics are I, I, very personal yeah. to Maynard, I think. Yeah, it's... Maynard writes all the lyrics. He's... Just just to, just to mention that, because some yeah. bands, that's not the case, but... Right. It's, it's about, like, a very dependent relationship in terms of, like, the lyricism... But you don't know who it's about, or, you know, he also said in an interview that, you know, his son is named, what, Devo H? Right? Yes. Yeah. So, could be a And obviously H, H refers to heroin, too, so. Right. Obviously, and that's, that's, a, that's a theme that's, especially in their early, from, like, opiate, which obviously is named opiate, and yeah. specifically refers to religion, but it's still the drug kind of theme. And then yeah. an undertow, too, obvious songs like Sober. Yeah. And that continues here. They use drug imagery right. and drug concepts and addiction concepts to explore other ideas. As well as just on a very surface level, you can read it about being dependent on a substance. So, Yeah. It's it's still a good song. It's not the like the worst song I've ever heard. You know, it's still a Tool song, so it's yeah. pretty good. But Very enjoyable. Yeah. We get to the first interlude. So, this is... This is a, a sticking point for a lot of people. So These are what I hate on Tool albums. So, most of them, most of the time I like them. But here's my problem with them. What is the what is the first interlude again? Useful Idiot. Oh, yes, the record scratching. Yeah, this was to, like, fuck with the people who had vinyl records at yeah. the time. It's like, really, though? <laughs> They're still buying your album. Like, come on. Don't fuck with the people who buy your shit. <laughs> So, this is the first album they have, because Undertow has Disgustipated, 
but Disgustipated is kind of like an interlude, but it's also got some musical elements. Yeah. And it's more involved than most of these ones right. on here are. My problem with them most of the time, and I know this is weird. They don't add anything. Well, here's here's the problem for me, is they split they split the tracks up a lot. When yeah. but to me at least, and I think some people can relate probably. But when I I see fifteen tracks on an album, right? Yeah. I'm thinking like fifteen songs. Right. So when there's only there's fifteen on the list here, right? There's fifteen tracks, and so there and only ten of them are songs. And I'm gonna all just one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine songs. Oh, I was off by one. So, well, and it gets lower and lower as the songs get longer on later albums. But all I want to say is that, like, especially on Lateralis, a lot of those intermissions or interludes add a lot to the songs, I think, for me. Like, if you listen to right. Mantra going into Schism, for instance, is one that I can think of immediately, yeah. then it may, I like, I, prefer to listen to them together but when you split them up and to make them their own track for me it makes it feel like on all these interludes like they're it, it, feel, it makes them feel more like filler yeah when oh, i think yeah. probably their idea is well if we just make it so you can skip it then right you can just skip it but to me i prefer like i like the sounds on a lot of them and i think they're they're interesting concepts just yeah like, and a lot of them are like they're weird or make you feel slightly uncomfortable, which is what I think they were going for. But when right. they split them up and give them their own spot on the album, it sort of makes you feel like you're getting gypped out of a couple songs, even when really... It w- if it was nine songs and no interludes, or nine songs plus the interludes, of course I want the interludes, because they don't right. take away anything, obviously. But Right, but they don't add anything either. That's my opinion. So if, I, if, I, if it were my album, right. probably none of them would be their own track. Right. But the only one we'll get we'll get to uh I'll just wait till we get to, I'll just yeah. wait. there's one that especially I'm like this one has to be on here so yeah but useful idiot interesting enough the vinyl thing that's fine yeah there's there forty six and two probably uh, my favorite tool song I mean it's good I like it yeah it's about potatoes yes something to do with chromosomes who who cares it's nerd shit yeah <laughs> that's the thing about tool shit tool it's nerd shit who gives a fuck yeah but it's and I've said this before, but it's like a really heavy song, like really heavy emphasized, like in the bass and guitar. It's yeah, really like heavy. It's definitely one of the bangers. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, you feel the bass in it if you you know you got some good subs on. And like you know, like Stink Fist, and it was also I think probably I think it was the second single. It's got for the most part a verse, chorus, verse sort of structure at the beginning, and then it kind of. Get right. solo at the end, so again, I think I feel like I don't know how much of this is intentional, how much of this is just them over time becoming more interested in in casting off like the normal song structures. But I feel like they they on some level they ease people in, right? They ease people into it, yeah. And then I I feel like that's why people get so attached to them, yeah, because it like and it's. There's another band, which I don't know, I know you're not overly familiar with them, but I'm sure at some point I can make you listen to some so we can talk about it on here, but Radiohead is another band that does the same thing, where they take these weird genres, and they just kind of incorporate them into more traditional rock. I've listened to Radiohead. Well, I didn't know how much you listened to. I've listened to Kid A. That's about it. And Kid A is a good example, because a lot of the songs on there are pretty out there, even for them, but like, out there in terms of their normal listener base and, like, normal radio stuff. Because they're pulling from all this, like, the weird shit people were doing in the 60s and, like, Aphex Twin in the 90s, and these are all their inspirations, and they kind of put that in a package that's that's that can ease the average person in. Right. Yeah. Which is nice. It's a good thing. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a gay, I mean, I'm not gonna get out here and tell you Radiohead or Tool is the weirdest music that anybody ever makes. Tool, and especially but, this album, is the gateway drug to, like, I think I'm deep music. Yeah, like weird, weird, especially with Tool, yeah. weird metal, weird yeah. rock, shit like that. So, right. 46 and 2 is a good track. It's got a, the time signature shit is really on display here. Yeah. Because it just, it, it the way the rhythm kind of lumbers back and forth is really. Right. Because, you know, you got to evolve. Well, I think all the songs before were, like, in 4 
and I think H is in three or six. So this one's in five, and there's the drum solo is in seven. So it's yeah, once again, kind of I think I don't know their intentions, obviously, but easing people into it. So yeah, message to Harry Man back. This I. <laughs> I like, I like, this is, I think, my favorite interlude. I think it's my favorite, too, except for... Because he's, like, a very threatening Italian man (laughs) on a, on a messaging machine talking about how he hopes your family gets into a a car accident or hope you get cancer. It's, you know, something I'd probably want to do that I didn't like, answering machine. Yeah, it's good shit. Yeah. It's good shit. It's, It's entertaining. And it's very, you don't really quite hear him. Especially that first time. That first time, it is it is uncomfortable because I think it's got like the piano. Yeah, it's and it has like beach sounds yeah. and stuff in the background. But he's just like he's very drowned out, so you don't quite hear him, and you're like, "What the fuck is this dude talking about?" It yeah. sounds like you know you get like a a message in, that's meant for somebody else, and he starts talking about like, "Oh, I know Italian black magic," and you're <laughs> like, "I don't know what that means." Exactly. So. Again, not too much to say, but I like it. Yeah. Probably my favorite, besides the one we'll get to in a minute. It's good for, like, you know, you're, like, grooving to 46 and 2, and you're like, yeah, and then you hear, I hope your family gets into a car accident. You're like, fuck, what? (laughs) (laughs) So, Hooker with a Penis. Probably Uh, the most aggressive song in the album. And I think I've noticed something that they do. Tool sucks after their first album, bro. Ever since this... This album is they kind of they put that that heavy ass song right in the middle, yeah. which is what they do with ticks and leeches, and I would probably classify. I mean, I don't know. You can argue either way on Ten Thousand Days because there's not too much aggressiveness, but yeah. the, the pot gets there and Rosetta Stone yeah. oh, gets yeah, there, and those yeah. are both towards the center. So yeah. this one again, it's not. It, it's in a. It's they for foregone four, so it's in six. Yeah. And just lots of like dead, you know, really in your face, very upfront lyrics. Yeah. Like this is one of the songs that like I think anybody listening to it the first time, there's not a whole lot of um, interpretation to be had because it's pretty much clearly the Maynard gives the point of the lyrics directly in the in the is lyrics. Is this the first example of Maynard talking about how he doesn't like Tool fans? Um, I mean, yeah, and it's. It's the most. It's one of the most direct Tool songs. We also need to talk about how because even um, this band is named so Maynard could get dudes to wear a shirt that says Tool. I'm not positive that it, it was his idea, but it sounds like it. Uh yeah. This is a dude who shoots paintballs at fans, bro. <laughs> so I wouldn't be surprised. So, I mean, I like. I, I really like the song, but it's yeah. not one of my very favorites. The lyrics, not too much to say, obviously. Just, just calling out, like, yeah, just calling out people who, uh... And, th- and this type of person is annoying. Oh, yeah. That Maynard is bitching about. They are incredibly annoying. Right. How, how can somebody sell out after their first EP? All right, so no, we, we you, are, you don't want to get me going, but the entire idea, the entire concept of selling out <laughs> is, like, so pretend... For the most part. I don't know, but Metallica really did sell out, bro. Here's the thing. Let's and I'll just say this. I think for the most part, people like bands that do what people think is selling out is really them over time as they get older. Most people like most artists like make less interesting shit. Yeah. You start running out of ideas. You they start... just fall back on the standard you know, they make more songs, but they're not trying to yeah. push themselves. So, I mean, is to a to an extent, is a band like Metallica, you know, is it intentional that a lot of their music after the Black Album has more mainstream appeal to a certain extent? I mean, maybe, maybe a little bit, but I don't think I don't think they ever decided, yo, let's compromise what we find interesting musically and artistically in order to make a lot of money. Because they were already successful in the first place. They have no right. reason to do that. Right. And obviously, they're one of the worst case examples where a lot of people turn to have turned on them in the past 20, 30 years. Because yeah, but they haven't been making good music for the past 20 years. Well, I know, years. but I'm just... That's, you know... And that's, it's not because they're selling out. It's because they just fucking suck. But you understand where I'm coming yeah. from. So oh, just yeah, the whole... It's just a non... To me, it's like a non-criticism of 
yeah. of of a of a group. Anyway, so it's a good song. Yeah. Next, this is intermission. So I want to say this is my favorite interlude, and only because I never, never, I can't stomach listening to Jimmy without intermission before it. Because if you, I'm sure you noticed, but it's the obviously the same melody as the song. It, it is literally just the guitar riff of the beginning of Jimmy, but played on an organ. Yeah. So to me, that's the point. Like that's uh, irrevocably attached to the song. Yeah. So to me, it's the most important interlude by that regard. And this is a good example. And but like I said, a bunch of of, of Lateralis has this where I would never listen to Jimmy without listening to Intermission for the most part. Yeah. And let's get into Jimmy, because I think Jimmy Jimmy's is probably song. the most obtuse song on the album, lyrically. Really? I, I think so. I think, I, read... I think it's easy to make it, make an inference and get something out of it, but I think be, being able to say definitively, like, this is what I think he definitely meant is, is more difficult than a lot of the other songs yeah, on the it's... album. He's said that it's supposed to be about getting through over abuse, and it's supposed to be like a sequel to Prison Sex. That's what I've I think I've heard before as well. Yeah, I read the Wikipedia today. <laughs> it's been a while since I actually went back and listened to this album, so because it's it's really not one of my favorites. So, but when you listen to the actual, just read the lyrics. It's hard to, for me anyway, I don't see a lot of that. I mean, I I get the concept. There's a lot of the lyrics like hammer on, hammer on stuff that uh, doesn't seem to enforce that point that much. So, right. the song is fine enough. It kind of, it kind of really rides that one rhythm the whole time. Yeah. A lot more than something like uh, Stink Fist or H does. 46 and 2 kind of does it, but. Yeah. So, I like it. It's not one of my favorites. I do think the lyrics are pretty interesting, and you, you could probably get a lot of different interpretations out of them. Right. Yeah. Do you notice how you've been saying everything past, you know, hooker with a penis, like, including hooker with a penis, you know, you were saying, I like you, but it's not my favorite. This is why I say that, you know. Well, just wait, because the next three songs are my favorite songs on the album. <laughs> See, they're not mine. So, because I think Tool writes long Metal song is better than most bands do. So, but yeah, I guess. But Dire Dire Ear von Satan. I'm probably saying that wrong. Means the eggs of Satan in German, I believe. Yeah, the eggs and, of Satan. Yeah. And isn't it a recipe? It, a cookie, a cookie recipe. Uh, a cannabis cookie recipe. A yeah. cannabis cookie recipe yeah. over like this a pounding industrial beat, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed, it's supposed to uh, be evocative of a like Nazi rap. Yeah, or like. But it's really like. Supposed to be also like a cookie recipe slash um, like a reference to deviled eggs. Yeah, so just obviously because IR means eggs. Obvious, yeah, obviously a joke. Like yeah. of, I think it also can be translated like as the balls of Satan. Yeah, because IR is also like a double entendre in German for balls. Yeah, fuck my eggs. So yeah, funny. It's 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 more interesting musically than most of them, just because the the actual yeah. music sounds like some nine inch nail shit. Yeah, yeah. So it's fine. Then we get to push it. So another long track. So here's here's what you'll notice about the end of the album because Eulogy teases with it a little bit where it's really long, but all of these right. tracks are some of the more longer ones on the album. And push it is one of my um, more favorite Tool songs, and I especially really like the version on their live album. Yeah. Um, but it's not like musically this one compared to even it's it's more similar to Eulogy than it is to Enema and, and Third Eye because it it really builds and builds up to a climax kind of just like Eulogy yeah. does. So there's not too much variance over time, right. you know what I mean? And it does have a kind of, a bit of a verse chorus thing, but it's obviously by the end it's kind of just building towards that big, that big high, but the lyrics, especially, I think these are some of my favorite Maynard lyrics, and they're not especially like, you know, people people give him credit for writing lyrics that are really complex or right, but I really think his best lyrics are are the ones that are more 
they're vulnerable, but they're they are li- they're a little abstract because that's what he likes to write his abstract lyrics. Yeah. But I've never liked his like, um, con- you know, his he's trying to talk about like intellectual concepts, right? Or you know, like stuff like right on right in two on ten thousand days feels really preachy to me. Yeah, but you listen to something like ten thousand days, which is obviously very personal. In Wings for Marie. Yeah, well, both of them together, yeah. And something like Push It, and I think these are when his lyrics are at their best, when they feel very personable, and they feel like they... They they were written by... They perhaps come from a place of truth, but... Written by a human and not a Wikipedia article. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, a big part of the song is the lyrics for me, and I just like the, the actual rhythm and the vibe of the song, and I... In the kind of uncomfortable tone it has. Right. I think it rides it out. It hits that climax really well. Yeah. I really like it. It's probably my favorite song so far on the album. In contrast to Eric. Um, I will say that it is my favorite song on the back half of this album. I'm surprised you don't like Enema a lot. I don't. Because for a long time, that was my favorite track on the album. And it is still my favorite track on the album to play on the drums, as I mentioned yeah. before. So. Why, why would you think I'd like Enema, Tyler? We'll get there, but Cesaro some ability. This one is, uh... I don't like it. Yeah. It's there, it exists. I listen That's, to it This is, I... because as, if, if you're paying attention to the track list, it's like three songs, interlude, one song, interlude, one song, interlude, and then, to me, because intermission I obviously include a part of Jimmy, then it's like song, song, and then it's back and forth, one then the other. And that's a, yeah. a habit they get into... It's like Naruto more and more the filler. Ex- you it's know, Oscar Mayer, this album. Tool is the shonen anime of music, really, when you think about it. Uh, uh, no, it's more like the uh, Dark Souls 2 of Tool, this album. Please be quiet. <laughs> so, this is some ability. It's fine. It's probably the most easily cuttable yeah. of these interludes. Right. Absolutely nothing interesting going on. It's got a baby noise. Baby noise is... Annoying. I don't know. I've listened to a lot of albums... That have they try to make you feel uncomfortable by using baby noises? Why? And it's it's uh, it's a lost cause. Yeah. A baby crying is not. Doesn't make me feel uncomfortable. It just pisses me off. Maybe if I was a parent or something. No. Whatever. Maybe there's something to be said for he had an infant son. Devo H. Baby sounds. I don't fucking know. I don't. When it gets to these interludes, it's really. I'm curious to see wh- who made them or who came up with the idea for a lot of them you know what i mean because i'm inclined i'm inclined to think a lot of them come from adam because adam is a big source of like the musical writing of the of the songs a lot of the time but that's not always true so yeah i'd be curious to know but i don't think that's ever information we'll have so right enema so the third big single and i think this is the weird one for the singles because it's a weirder song because the entire back half is non-traditional. Yeah. Because it has a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then it kind of just... Bi- and then it has a climax. First song with a reference to Bill Hicks, right? No. I mean... The Ari- Arizona Bay itself is a reference to Bill Hicks' special Arizona Bay. Right. And I show this off, but Mr. Bill Hicks. I, I like Bill Hicks more than, more than Tool. If we're being honest. Yeah. But anyway. So, yeah. I mean, Arizona Bay itself is, but the yeah. Third Eye has an actual clip from yeah, one of his yeah, specials. Yeah, yeah. I said first, like, reference yes. to... Yeah, so, yeah, I would say you're right. Um, once again, it's in a non-traditional um, time signature. Yeah. It's in six. He's, he's complaining about California. This one also has pretty direct lyrics, and it's... it's I mean, it's fairly aggressive. He's I, mad about yeah. California and how they're all annoying. Welcome to uh, welcome to. Um, I think I mean, that's that's what it is about. But I also think welcome to Twitter. Everyone's <laughs> mad about California. I don't think it's I don't think it's expressly about California. Uh, I think it, I mean, obviously, literally, it is. But then, literally, stink fist is about putting your elbow in someone's fucking asshole. You don't put your elbow. You go up to your elbow. You know what I mean. Um, but. I, I think it just the the discontent it has with a the the, the zeitgeist of the, the just material yeah just materialism and consumerism I think is it, it expresses discontent right. with all that which isn't 
Which we millennials killed, right? Yeah, which isn't the newest. <laughs> we were, we were it's not the newest. Um, we heard this album in the womb and it influenced our mind. Tool the, created millennials. <laughs> the newest thing to complain about. But I, I mean, it's not like most of the... It's not like I haven't felt most of the discontent and like distaste with materialism and consumer culture and stuff that he's talking about. Right. It's you know, just that a lot of the lyrics are very literal. Right. It's not... It's, it's a middle schooler song, bro. It, the, this is like the most like, I'm mad at my parents. These fucking people, <laughs> man, they don't get me, man. These fucking, they're hacks, man. They don't fucking get it. I I'm too deep for these people, man. I wouldn't call you wrong, and I think I left that shit back in middle school. I think the real, I think the real like references to like you know like Prozac and insecure actresses and stuff right. hurts it a little more when you could probably when Maynard is abstract enough most of the time to kind of express the same sentiment in a different way that's less attached to real world like like you said edginess if you want to call it that yeah. It's like not that I, not that I find the entire thing like super distasteful or anything because like I said the con, the conceit of the the song I agree with and there's there's shit in there I like like when after that first sort of breakdown when it's got the rolling drums and all the short, long verses when it when um, there's not a lot of background music and he's talking about Mother Nature swallowing um, yeah. like Mom's gonna bring it all around again that part like that if if the song kind of focused more on that kind of concept of mother nature like yeah. like crushing humanity or something you can express yeah. the same idea without um all the real world shit attached to it necessarily right and it's probably more relatable to more people but that's just my interpretation like i said i said maybe i said before the enema of my this is my third favorite track and i don't know if that's true but it, i do i mean i do prefer it over stuff like jimmy I think I like it more than Hooker with the Penis, for instance, but... Yeah. I'm not trying to, like, rank all the songs or anything, but... I think that... that yeah, uh, yeah. I got you. Then we have Ions. So this one's fine. This is another one that I feel like is... It's a, forgettable. I always forget it's there. I always feel like it's just attached to... The last two songs I always forget, like, exist. Here's what I would do, is I would have the electrical, because what I do is, what I do like is how it kind of rolls around if you're listening with earphones. Yeah. Or just speakers with yeah. good stereo differentiation or whatever. It The electricity sounds, and that's all the whole I, song is, yeah. is it rolls around the your your head, which when I was like 12 and listening, 12, 13 listening with headphones, I was like, you can do that? What the fuck? Right. But... If it was doing that at, in the background while Bill Hicks was talking, I think that would make. I think I would prefer that because I like, I like it as a, as a piece of third eye as a as a composition. But right in itself, it's just there's nothing yeah. too interesting going on yeah. with it as its own track, and that leads back to my opinion of you can attach these ideas into the songs, yeah, and then be fine because I don't I don't have a problem with the songs having weird shit in them. You know what I mean? I yeah. just don't like track space, for lack of a better term, being taken up by stuff that I don't like. Right. Like I said, it's an Oscar Mayer wiener with just weird <laughs> shit added into it because yeah. they felt like It's a it. cheesy dog, bro. It, it's a cheese McNugget. <laughs> oh, God. I just, I'm having traumatic memories of elementary school eating a cheese McNuggets one day. Kids went home throwing up and shit. So, <laughs> I don't think I Third know eye. that happened. Third Eye is uh, probably the most forgettable Tool song I can think of. It's probably my favorite song on the album. That dude, I except for the Bill Hicks thing at the beginning. I, here's the big problem I have with Tools a lot of the time. You know, it feels like they just make a, and I have the same problem with Metallica too. Another band that makes like really long songs. A lot of the time, it feels like they just made a long song to make a long song. They didn't make a long song to do a lot of interesting things in that long song. They just made. Well, they just decided it, to make an eleven-minute song, which I, I know this. This song eleven minutes. It's thirteen minutes. So they made a. 13 but it's got that Bill Hicks talking for like a minute of it or so. So right. It's just. It, 
So here's you and could I cut it in half and have two different songs, and you you wouldn't be out of anything. And I I I see what where you're coming from, but the, here there's a fine line to me, and the fine line is if the song like because the worst example by far to me because it's one of my least favorite songs is Inagata De Vida, which is an absolutely oh, right. terrible song. Yeah, because it is the exact same rhythm. There is, yeah. there. I mean, there's a, like a drum. There's a couple drum breaks and stuff in the middle. But then what it does is it it's, it rides the rhythm. Do 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 do. You know, it rides yeah. the, the Inagata yeah. De Vida rhythm. Has a drum break right back to the same old yeah. got up fucking rhythm. Well, here, okay. But then, but the difference between. But that. but listen, but because here's why I like a song like Third Eye, which is similarly long, and also if you look at them. As like, if you can, I mean, it's obviously this is like an abstract concept. Break them down into separate ideas of how many song ideas are in the song. It might be similar, but to me, something like Third Eye or something like Eulogy or Push It, what it does differently is it's it's building, and the song is always ascending towards that climactic moment. So lyrically, does something like Third Eye have as many cool lines as something like um, I don't know H or 46 and 2 I guess not but what I do like about it compared to something like the worst case example in Nagata De Vida to me is that it is it they when Tool writes a long song and they never write it without momentum right it's like they're it's like they're 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 pushing a rock up a hill and then when it hits that climax they push it down you know what I mean as opposed right. to um, like in a God of Vida, I would call like edging. It's just edging. You like you just want the shit to be over. Yeah. Like you just want to get that nut, but you can't get it because the right. fucker will not end. To me, something right. like Third Eye is like you're you're building up to a massive nut, and in a God of Vida's, you know, edging towards a, a minimal nut. Yeah. So so, and there's lots of there's lots of um, artists I like that have similar. They do similar shit like. I think I haven't had you listen to any um, of Swan's newer albums, but they have songs that are yeah. over thirty minutes. And let me tell you, most of those songs aren't verse, chorus, verse, shit. But what they are is they have six, often seven people playing different instruments, and what they're doing is layering right. and ascending towards a, a massive mm-hmm. climax. So, yeah. of course, whether you like that particular music is a, something we'll find out. But that's that's why what I get out of Third Eye. That yeah. I don't get out of forty six and two, where forty six and two is like this rhythm's fucking tight, you yeah. know, you know, and the drum solo, like the drum solo fucking bops. I get I get that out of forty six and two. What I don't get out of forty six and two that I do get out of third eye is this constant ascension towards like right that that climax. But here's the thing: the problem that I have with third eye is that compared to forty six and two, is I have never once been bored listening to forty six and two. I'll like I in the re-listen that I did today, so we talk about it. I would get to Third Eye, and I would be sitting there going, "Wow, I could literally be doing anything else." <laughs> I that mean, and that's fair. I'm not all drugs aside. I'm obviously not telling you that your opinion's wrong or whatever. But you that's literally fair. do that all the time. I know, but it's always a joke because it's right. subjectivity. I mean, objectivity is a fucking meme. So yeah, which is fair. That's fine. Yeah. You don't have to get the same thing out of it. That's why it's a good album. Yeah. So, what else? Do you have anything else that you want to say about this album? Not really. It's yeah. a good one. Yeah, it's it honestly it stands the the stands against time. It is timeless. Absolutely, yeah. I I agree. Except for Enema. The I mean, I even think this the shit on Enema, the the actual realistic lyrical references still. Hold relevance. I mean, whether or not you find that relevance interesting, I think shit. The shit he does say, stuff like fretting over your prescription drugs and your butler and your and your religion and all and you know your religion. I think he's more reference when he talks about smiley glad hands. He's talking about politicians or like religious leaders who just preach what you want to hear. But I think most of that stuff still holds true today, whether or not you find. The, the real world reference is interesting of course right. it's separate from that but yeah, yeah I definitely think it, it it stands the test of time yeah it's, so I like it it's good shit yeah whiskey time's over love you
course. 